Hey, everybody. Welcome to Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. I'm your host, Clint Chaffer, and today is a really special edition with uh, a great diverse group of women that have joined me for our Women in Ag uh, episode here. How about you kick it off with some introductions here? All right. I am Tara Schrock, and I am Clint's sister, the coolest one of the family, <laughs> but um, born and raised on a family farm in Illinois, and uh, back in agriculture, working as a director of sales for Trailer Borg um, and Mitas brand agricultural tires. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining. And I'm Anita Chaffer, and I am Clint and Tara's mother, and we farm on the family farm here in Illinois. So this is your like second, third time on the podcast at this point in time, right? <laughs> oh yeah, so, so, re- reoccurring guest here. So <laughs> thanks to my son. So okay. <laughs> And hi, I'm Kate Danner. Uh, we are at my store today. Um, I manage about uh, 1,500 acres of corn and soybeans and about two and a half acres of sunflowers. And I'm so happy to have all of you here. Yeah, yeah. We are in your brand new flower shop. So it's very exciting. Yeah, thanks for hosting here. <laughs> so. Anytime, anytime. Happy to be here. And I should clarify, I'm not a chaffer. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Again, thank you all for uh, for joining here. So this is uh, this is awesome to have each one of your perspectives on uh, on just the ag industry and really starting from there. I mean, ag is a very challenging but very rewarding uh, industry. Uh, what what brought you to the ag industry? Uh, Honestly, it was really an accident. So I grew up on a family farm, but I had zero interest in the farm. Like, you know, kind of the idea of like, oh, you grew up in cornfields. Like, why would you want to come back? And honestly, not until I went to college. I went to college on a volleyball scholarship. Um, Really didn't have any plan, didn't have a direction. I was kind of a 'er ne'er-do-well, really honestly. Um, But I, I don't know, like I just kind of really all the kids that I went to school with, they were in ag. They thought it was so cool. I was like, man, I'm from a farm. It's not that cool. And uh, and I, I kind of started to look at, um, I'm 5'5", five, five, probably not going to be a professional volleyball player. So I thought, hey, like, maybe I should be interested in agriculture. Maybe I should come home. And so I asked my dad, I was like, hey, can I stay home for a year? I ended up taking a year off school and I got like kind of a ground level view of what life would be like after college. And um, I just kind of really loved the small town. Um, I loved kind of being my own boss every day. Um, and, my, and my father's been really, really welcoming to me to, to make those kinds of decisions and really transfer um, responsibilities over solely to me to the farm. Well, that is awesome. I mean, you know, say because you're you're the primary farmer on this farm now, right? I mean, like, I mean, as far as for taking over. Yep, absolutely. So, Dad is my number one help. He's always here for advice. He's happy to do anything. I have, I really have a hard time like telling him what to do. So I know, like, every day I'm like, Hey, I've got like two or three things. Do you have a choice of which one you would like to do? Um, so you know, but that's kind of just growing pains, like working with your parents. It's just, it's just kind of a just. How, how do you, yeah, how do you, how do you tell your parents what to do? And that's, that's not, that's not anything that I, I want to do. Um, so, you know, we've, we, you know, we make a really good team and that's really what I learned. And I, I think that that's really why I, I stayed in farming is because I was just able to have that opportunity. Ah, that is, that is great. I think uh, anytime, uh, you know, you, you, you have your family around you while you're farming, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of farmers around and uh, farming's all about teamwork, right? I mean, there's Absolutely. a lot of folks that, uh, that help out and it's great that you get to do that with the, with your dad there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. How about you, mom? Well, I was born and raised on a farm and, um, then um, my dad, I, then of course I went to school and wasn't too active in the farming. Um, but then eventually I married your dad, which wanted, who wanted to farm. And um, so we took over the family farm and expanded a little bit. And uh, that's where we're at today. Expanded a little bit. You guys like doubled in size, like the first like two years that you started farming together. So <laughs> that's, that's not, it's not expanding a little bit there. <laughs> no, but uh, we're still probably not considered a large farmer. Oh, yeah. So uh, yep. not, not in today's world, but uh, we are where we want to be. We wanted to keep it a family farm and we um, didn't really, it's, it's a family affair instead of a business, you know. So we kept the family involved, which you know, and yeah. uh, that's where we're still at today. Uh, so. That is fantastic. So, okay. 
How about you, Tara? So I can contest to this because um, it is a family thing because I did not have a job all the way through school and college because my job was working on the farm. Um, And uh, I got the opportunity from um, a very young age because I happened to be dad's firstborn and wasn't a boy. And so... (laughs) Um, I got to do all the fun jobs before you were ever around. Um, but no, I've always loved agriculture. Uh, I actually left, though, for a while and went on and got a computer science degree. <laughs> so as non-ag as that can get. But um, yeah, I love, I love the family farm. I love my kids being a part of it. My 16, 17-year-old now is employed by the farm still to this day, so... Yeah, I mean, you talk about you know like your your computer science background, right? Not being in <laughs> in agriculture, but I mean, quite frankly, that's a, a huge part uh, of of the industry now, right? I mean, as I think about uh, products like Climate yeah. Field View, um, I mean, that's that's one of those those key key pieces that we need, right? Or folks that are. Yeah are very tech savvy, but, you know, also have a passion for agriculture. It so. is. And, you know, in 22 years ago, um, you didn't, you just saw the, the start of it, you know? There wasn't, of course, all of your precision companies out there and stuff. So it really, when I was even searching for a job in computer science, a lot of agriculture wasn't out there, more so on their database side, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, um, you know, true mainframe, that sort of thing. But uh, that has definitely changed. So, Yes. A couple of you talked about uh, really not necessarily thinking you were going to go into ag, like right out of right out of high school and in and into college. Uh, what's the how did it kind of take you there? I mean, where where did that end up changing, or where was that revelation at? Yeah, so uh, mine was kind of purely by accident too. I got the opportunity to go. Um, Moved to Wisconsin and work in, uh, I would say, not as much agriculture, but the lawn and turf side of the business. Um, Vice president of sales for Lawnmower Blades, and that got me kind of connected with, uh, you know, the big OEMs. Um, And from there, I just, I fell in love with it all over again, and I was cracking up because I couldn't believe 22 years ago that I decided not to go into agriculture and that I wanted to um, experience other, other companies. But yeah, and so I'm glad to be back. Nice. Kate, I actually have a question uh, question directed to you. That uh, I mean, you're you're involved in a in a lot of the ag industry, not just in in farming. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you wear a lot of hats, so I do. walk I us do. through just some of that and uh, how did you get involved in in all these different facets of agriculture? Um, so I think what you're referring to are kind of all the the boards that I serve yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, a big part of my heart is community service um, and just being a part of the industry. If you don't have a seat at the table, then you don't have anything to say at the table. You know, if if you're not there, nobody knows what you have to say. Um, So I have had the wonderful opportunity of being part with the Illinois Soybean Association, the Illinois Corn Growers Association, and I guess for whatever reason, they think that it's fun to put me up on a stage and to speak. Um, And anyways, but people have just been really, really nice. I've had opportunities of a lifetime to travel overseas to represent agriculture. I believe the former Deputy Secretary of USDA introduced me to Vilsack as the poster child for corn and soybeans. You know, women are a vast growing industry. You know, I would say probably nine years when I started 22 years ago, you know, it, it really wasn't common. And I, I don't know if it's because, you know, they're becoming more accepting. I don't know if we have more of a an equal society now. I don't know if it's just maybe some men aren't as interested as farming in farming, um, but I just think there's more of an opportunity for everybody at the table now. And and uh, I think that's kind of a common misconception about women is that, oh, well, w- w- when did women get involved with that? And it's like, well, they've always been involved with that. I just think that maybe because the men were out doing all of the labor that maybe that they got a little bit more recognition. But I think that when I think about farming, I think about the family and how it takes everybody to make that farm happen. Yeah, and and uh, you know I, I would definitely say that. I mean, again, going back to the to the farming side, uh, my my mother, right? I mean, you, you've I've said this on multiple times uh, when talking with you, which uh, you you held our farm together, right? Uh, but uh, you had a lot of responsibility uh, on the farm too. I mean. From the perspective of you talk about some of the labor, right, that was going on. I mean, you do a ton of our field work. You haul a, a ton of our corn. Uh, let's not even talk about all the mowing that the uh, the, the, the woman does. Uh, but uh, but there's a, a lot that goes into that. Um, explain just some of the maybe the uh, the difficulties of of having that as a as a full time job, and plus just keeping the keeping the family together. I. Uh... 
don't know. It just all comes together. Um, we had the kids, and and uh, my mother at that time lived on the farm too, though, and helped immensely with babysitting when I could go to the field. And um, for a while, we did have extra help that lived on the farm, uh, hired hand uh, while the you were babies, and you know. So, but as time went on, uh, loaded you up in the car seats or what are they, then we called them little pumpkin seats and and uh, put you in the tractor and combine or whatever we had going and away we went so uh, like I say just a great place to raise a family so I want to add to that so that is something that I never really thought about I never thought about a female not being in agriculture because of this woman right here to me it was just normal um, she drives the semi still to this day, the the tractor, you know, I mean, it just, so for me, when I first really started paying attention to females in agriculture and what that looked like, it was kind of an eye opener because I just thought it was normal. Yeah. <laughs> All because yeah. of you. So thanks. <laughs> well, you know, Kate, you talked about uh, just uh, the, the number of women in farming. And I think the last time I checked, the USD states that there's uh, roughly a million women that are in agriculture. And that number is growing fast and rapidly. Uh, what advice would you give, uh, you know, give a woman that's, uh, that's looking at uh, getting into the ag industry at this point in time? What, uh, what kind of advice would you give her? So I think that the ag, uh, this is one of my favorite parts about the ag world, is that ag is anything that you can grow in the ground. You know, it doesn't have to be your corn and soybeans. I know it sounds really great that we all manage 1,500 acres of corn and soybeans. Our farms are roughly about the same size. But, you know, what I really learned last year, you know, I think a lot of us had a lot of time last year. And um, anyway, so I, I kind of actually accidentally planted some sunflowers. And at that moment, a bushel of corn, 56 pounds of shelled dry corn was worth the price of what I was selling one sunflower. And I'll tell you what, that was extremely eye-opening to me of, wow, I could, I could have so much more profit with a little bit more labor on a small scale versus kind of sharing your margins out on a big scale. And so my advice to my would be, you know, you don't have to have huge acres. You don't have to have huge equipment. You know, you've got to have a little bit of sweat equity, but, you know, just try. You know, what's, you know, the only thing that you're going to gain from trying is um, experience and learning and you'll just, you'll learn what you like, what you don't like, but you'll never know till you try. You know, I, I think that's a, a great advice for folks that are even uh, maybe not in the rural communities as well, right? I mean, Absolutely. urban farming and yep. some of the farmer's markets that are available now, I don't know if that was as big of a thing when we were growing up, but it seems like that's huge now. I really think that people are more invested into doing things locally and kind of realizing that, hey, you know, there is an opportunity to do that in a small town. We can do things just as good as anywhere else. Why shouldn't we provide that opportunity? And so I think there's just really kind of a big shift in uh, just the social economy of, hey, I would just rather buy it local than to go down the street or drive 50 minutes. Like, I just, I, I just think there's a big shift. Yeah. T Tara, you know, uh, from from your perspective, you know, you talked about the just the the, the number of years that you've been in the business, and uh, I, I would assume you've seen uh, a few things change culturally uh, during that time. What, what what have you seen from from your experience just on uh, for for women in in the industry? Yeah, so I've noticed uh, a big shift now um, in the leadership in agriculture. So I've oftentimes been the only female on my team and leading a team of people. Um, I've seen that shift now, especially in the past few years, even very recently, start shifting. Um, it is truly going towards your capabilities, your you know leadership capabilities, your knowledge of the industry, or even if you don't have knowledge in the industry, your want to learn about the industry. Um, and companies are really are really shifting that direction, and definitely it's much more competitive now. And and I'll say in a, all fairness for women too. Um, now I can't speak for all companies, of course, but for the most part, that is a big uh, a recent shift. So. Um. 
You know, it's it's interesting just that comment about uh, you know whether they they have uh, experience in agriculture or not, and I think that's always like a, a little bit of a misconception in mm -hmm. this industry. Uh, you do not need to know anything about agriculture to get into this industry, yeah. and uh, some of the the best teams that I've sat on, at least through my career, uh, are the ones that focus focus on diversified yeah. experience, right? And uh, I may bring a little bit of a farm outlook, and somebody else is going to bring a <laughs> supply chain yeah. management outlook, and some. Somebody else is bringing a, you know, whatever other kind of outlooks that we're looking for on our team. Uh, it uh, that that diversified outlook, I think, uh, I think that's where you create some of the most powerful teams. Absolutely, in business, some so. of my, I'll say, a salespeople on my teams have not come from agriculture, but been in agriculture, ended up there and on the team. But it's it had nothing to do. But they are a drive to want to learn it. To have that passion on and what they're what they're doing, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't have their biases, right? They don't care about red versus green, right? So, <laughs> facts. <laughs> and actually, we've got one over here that doesn't drive red or green, right? Yeah. <laughs> like my sunflowers, I like, I like my combine yellow. Oh, like them yellow. There I we go. It. I love it. <laughs> Oh, that is fantastic. Um, you know, looking at, you know, talking about some of the advice, I kind of want to stick on that a little bit. Um, as there are women right now graduating high school and graduating college, uh, what's some advice that you'd, uh, that you'd give them just on uh, on their their search for, for a career path right now? So um, so I kind of was a little bit on that path. Um, I, like I said earlier, I took a year off school. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to kind of dive into a bachelor's education if I didn't know what direction I wanted to head. Um, so I really would just advise people to, to work, to try new jobs out. You know, I, I worked for the, you know, my uncle had an insurance agency. Um, that was an option for me. Um, kind of liked it. We didn't really, I didn't really want to be stuck in an office all day. Um, gosh, uh, this, I don't know if this is embarrassing to say, but I got a job out of high school and I taught motorcycle safety for 10 years. I have issued over 500 license and, and I, I know, right. It, it sounds so goofy, but they, but they, I was a kid in college. They paid me $33 an hour. Like, how do you, like, how do you say no to that? I know. Right. Um, anyways, but what I really learned from that was just that I was doing the same thing every weekend and I was practicing and, you know, we were working on clutch control and shifting and rules of the road. And, and I mean, I probably could have climbed up, but again, like, did I really want to do that? Did I really want to teach the same weekend, you know? And after 10 years, I was like, oh boy, I definitely have other responsibilities and I don't want to give my weekends up. Um, but, you know, but I learned something in every job that I really was at. And, um, and I just, my advice is to, to try to learn, try different jobs, um, the only thing that you really have, you know, in life is you, you get such a, a short amount of time. And if you don't use all of it, you going to be good. It's going to run out. So mom, we talked about, you know, having, uh, having daughters, right? So we got, uh, Amy, Tara and Brandy. And, uh, I mean, even though you try to say you're the coolest ones, but you know, uh, you know, what was, what was your advice to them growing up? I mean, did, uh, did, did you try to push, I know both Tara and Brandy are, have been in the ag industry. Did you try to, you know, kind of push them that direction or was it just kind of wherever they, wherever they landed? No, uh, we supported whatever they wanted to do. Um, I think when they were in college, as you know, the uh, very well, dad pushed technology because he <laughs> really felt like this is the way the world was going. And even if you got into ag, you could always use the technology to go with it. And I don't think any of you have ever regretted doing that. So, um, but other than that, no. Um, they just, uh, whatever you wanted to do and proud of what you've done. But I do think the farm had a big influence um, by teaching you responsibility, um, flexibility, diversity. Uh, needless to say, um, there was just a lot of that taught from growing up on the farm. And I think it's made a big uh, difference in your life and uh, very proud and you've you've all been successful in your jobs so yeah uh, happy with that yeah well, cool. Well, well, we we appreciate everything that uh, that you provided us as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on your behalf, right there. I would imagine you you uh, you agree with me there. Uh, so so one one last thing uh, that, uh, that that I guess just that I'd like to get uh, from everybody uh, again, kind of sticking on this whole thing of advice. What is the best piece of advice that you've got in regards to your career? Um. Oh gosh. Um, well, I've 
love the farm, you know that, but I really do feel like it's probably a profession that's not granted to a lot of the women um, because you almost have to marry a farmer or you're not going, you are in the industry. I, I feel like you've got a, a wide variety of education and, and opportunities there. But to actually be on the farm and be the farm hand, there's not a lot of that around. But I'm just thankful I'm one of them. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. I love all of my jobs. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, so on the farm, I also wear many hats. So, yeah. And I enjoy every one of them. So. No, that, that is great. So. All right. Kate, how about, how about, uh, how about yourself? Uh, what's the best piece of advice career-wise that, uh, that, that you've ever gotten? Gosh, I, I don't know. We farm for profit, not practice. Um, I, think, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of people say, oh, you should follow your passion, you should follow your passion. And I think, I think there's a level of that, um, but I also think there's a reality to that as well. And um, I don't know, I think, I think that, that kind of speaks a little more true of kind of the long lease about, you know, what, what we really care about. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to, I guess that is capitalistic, but, um, but yeah, no, we, uh, we, we try to make decisions that um, are equitable, that um, are for the future. Um, you know, you don't buy the latest and greatest, you know, brand new combine, even though yellow is the prettiest color combine. Um, uh, you, you know, you don't, you know, you, you make sure you know where your margins are, you know, what you can afford, what your time can give. Um, you know, that's, I would farm for practice, not for profit or farm for profit, not practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can take that whatever direction. <laughs> um, well, I am not a farmer. Um, so my advice, uh, though, just from, um, that I was given it and it truly is just find what it is that you love. Um, to do because uh, I do have a passion for leading others. Um, I have always been drawn to that. I like uh, building teams. I like um, being very positive and optimistic in, in building those teams. Um, so, yeah. Y'all are incredibly uh, <laughs> successful at what you do. And, uh, and it was an absolute pleasure to, uh, to sit down and have this conversation. So, uh, so thank you. Uh, a special Thanks to Kate for letting us sit Anytime. here in Anytime. Dandy's flowers in your in your uh, in your brand new flower shop. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, do you have anything that you'd like to tell anybody about your flower shop here? Oh yeah. So I am really excited. I am very passionate about flowers. Um, but uh, what it is, it's a you pick flower farm. So you come, you pick. I've got about sixty four thousand sunflowers in the ground out there. Um, I've got a, a consistent seven different varieties that are in bloom every week. So I've got reds, purples, white yellows, like a light yellow, you know, we got to differentiate between the yellow combine and then, you know, your bumblebee yellow. Um, and then there's a, there's a corn maze that with my computer technology, I was able to draw on a computer. And then when I planted, the rows shut off. Um, there's a play place for kids. Um, but we just really hope that it's a place of agritourism where people can come and really experience the farm and you can smell the fresh country air and you can, I don't know, just be outside and, and just feel the magic that I guess we all get to live every single day. And so I'm just really hoping to share that with the community. Well, I'm uh, assuming as soon as this podcast ends, you're also going to have a couple new customers as well sitting I here. I sure so. hope so. Thanks, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. So, well, hey, that concludes our uh, our podcast today. Uh, I ask that uh, if you like the podcast, be sure to be sure to hit the, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, be sure to ring the bell to get notified each and every time uh, that we push out new content. And uh, with that, we'll see you around the farm. <laughs>